I love this brilliant joke by XKCD. Okay, hold still. And remember, if you really believe in the laws of physics, you won't flinch. Of course, that's not how it works. I'll just smash into their face. But I think they were playing along with Remember, if you had a, a pendulum and it was straight, at least, and you held it up to your face, then you let it go. In theory, it could go back and forth and it shouldn't hit you. That's true. Okay, let's remind ourselves uh, for springs, for example, undergoing SHM, just because the spring one is easier to look at, I think, than the uh, pendulum. But if you look at this one here, this is equilibrium, and this whole thing, remember, is going to be going uh, left and right. It's going to be oscillating back and forth. And as it goes back and forth, it goes between equilibrium point, x equals 0, and the maximum displacement, which is, say, x equals x0, we call it. Now remember about potential energy, if this is zero, uh, potential energy is zero. If this is a max, uh, then this one here will be a maximum value. Okay, good. Uh, maybe I should even say equals max. Okay, then uh, what about the speed? Well, the speed over here, it's technically stopping, so that means V equals zero, and that means uh, over here then V must be a maximum. And if that's the case then, let's see if this is a max, then so is EK here. And over here, EK will be zero because they're related to speed, right? EK is a half mv squared. And let's remind ourselves what happens with energy in terms of the displacement. Um, if I do blue is my kinetic energy, well then at x equals zero, EK is max, so it goes here. So it's basically something like, I'm just gonna try to draw it, something like this. This will be EK. And remember then that EP will be the opposite, so it'll be something like this and something like this. So that would be EP, it would be these points right here, and here, and here. And remember that the total energy is going to be uh, some straight line like this right here. That will be ET, which is the kinetic plus the potential. Okay, why am I reminding you of this when I already did it before in another video? Because we're going to be using this idea and these thoughts right here to help us to figure out what happens with energy. So let's look at what happens with the potential energy um, of an object that's undergoing simple harmonic motion. So potential energy, we're going to say EP half m omega squared x squared. Now we've got the potential energy, which is in joules, mass is in kilograms, omega is the angular frequency as usual, and x is the displacement from equilibrium. Okay, what about kinetic energy? This is not in your data booklet, but it really helps to be able to find this. You could be asked this, so I want to show you how to get it. I mean, remember, uh, kinetic energy equation normally just goes half mv squared, but we also have an equation for v. Remember, for simple harmonic motion, it goes technically plus or minus, but it's omega times the square root of x0, oops, I gotta go like this, x0 squared minus x squared. Okay, well then if I put these two together, look, I've just got to do the V and just square it. So that means I'm going to have, so maybe I'll write down so, uh, comma, well, it'll be 1 half M, okay, that's on the first part, 1 half M, and then I've got to put down then this whole thing right here squared. So that means it's going to be, uh, well, omega will be squared, and then I'll have the square root squared, so it'll just be X0 squared minus X squared, this part right here will be in a, like this parentheses. So really, I can just write it down without all the weird parentheses. At least I can take out one of them. So it's just going to be half m omega squared x0 squared minus x squared. So this you don't have to memorize, uh, but it would really help to be able to get to do this. Okay, that would really help. And again, that's because we just use this equation right here of ek, and we just put in v in here. And then in the end, oh, don't forget, by the way, what x0 is. That's the amplitude. Okay, so now let's look at the maximum kinetic energy. Now, this one is also not in your data booklet, but it helps uh, if you know about kinetic energy and that graph that I just reminded you of. So remember this one here with kinetic energy going like this right here? This is EK. Remember that the maximum kinetic energy happens, for example, when x equals 0. So I'll write that down, actually. So EK max is when, this is really important, okay, when x equals 0. Do you see that here? So when x equals 0, that's when you have ek max. So that's this point right here. That's this ek, the maximum kinetic energy, ek max. Happens there. If that's the case, then let's remind ourselves, remember what the ek equation was. The kinetic energy equation was 1 half m omega squared times x0 squared minus x squared. 
Okay, that's what we had before. So what can we say then? Well, then we'll say ek max. Well, what will I do then? Well, I'll just write this equation. Okay, one half m omega squared. Um, and I'll have x zero squared minus, and here I just put in x equals zero, so it's going to be zero squared. See, that came from right here. Okay, so this is my general equation for the kinetic energy. This, though, is what happens at ek max. So therefore, I could say then that ek max, the maximum kinetic energy, will be, do you see it, was, it wasn't that bad? It's just one half, let's see, it's m omega squared times just x zero squared, so just the amplitude squared. And that's it. So this is another equation that is really nice if you can know how to derive. Okay, so now let's look at the total energy. So the total energy, well, let's see, that's just going to be the potential plus the kinetic. Okay, that's fine. And let's look at, again, what's happening here with our kinetic energy graph, which went like this right here. This is your EK one. And this time I'm also going to include the potential one, which went like this and like this. That's my EP one. But I just want you to notice, remember we talked about this point right here, this maximum kinetic energy here, EK max, that's this one right here. Just like this is EP max, I guess, technically. But I want you to notice something really important, okay? So, notice that at EK max, what happens? At EK max, EP equals zero. So that means the total energy then, let's see, it's gonna be, well, EK max plus zero. Therefore, we could say that ET, the total energy, is just equal to the maximum kinetic energy. So this is gonna be an important piece to know. Um, this will really help you because we're gonna say this, that if you want to know EK max, that's gonna be the same as just finding ET. That's going to be the case here. And if you need EK, remember, I'm just trying to remind you here, what do we do? We just use the fact that EK equals half mv squared, and the fact that v equals, remember, it's plus or minus omega times square root of x0 squared minus x squared. So basically, you just put this you know, into here. You basically take this v, put that into there, and there you go. So that's our exam tip. However, the good news is you're given the equation for ET, so that they actually tell you in your data booklet. And ET is the same thing as EK max was, what we just found before. So that's just one half m omega squared x zero squared. And this one is on your data booklet. So again, just to try to uh, revise for you. So if you did need uh, ET, you have it. You're given that on your data booklet. But if you want EK max, good news. It's actually the same. EK max also equals this. So that's a nice little pro tip here. And if you need to know EK, well, then just use your equation for half mv squared and put in v here and square it. And you'll end up with this whole thing. Remember, except it was just, you know, with this thing minus x squared like this. That's what it looked like. Of course, I'll remove it like this because I don't want to confuse things. So there we go. We've got all our equations that we need.